Now by now was a nail biter, going into extra innings. But in the end, it didn't work out for the Sox. Let's check in with NECN's Mike Perlo. He's at Fenway Park. Hi, Mike. Hey, Barbara. A very strange, empty feeling here at Fenway Park today. Of course, just a few days ago, this place was packed with fans cheering the Red Sox on against the New York Yankees in Game 5 of the ALCS. And some surreal images we've seen here at the park in just the last hour. Uh, Nomar Garcia Parra was in center field with his fiance Mia Hamm kicking a soccer ball around. Trot Nixon out in fittingly right field with his little boy throwing a baseball around. Certainly the images we didn't want to see here. We wanted to see the Red Sox preparing for Game 1 of the World Series. But we are once again in wait till next year mode thanks to, of course, what happened late last night at Yankee Stadium. Game 7 of the ALCS. First pitch from Tim Wakefield in the bottom of the 11th. And Aaron Boone broke all of Red Sox Nation's hearts with the walk-off home run. Mike Giardi was here earlier today at Fenway Park and caught up with the Red Sox the day after. The eighth inning, leading by three, as Boone hits it to deep left. That might send the Yankees to the World Series. It never should have come to this for the Boston Red Sox in 2003, but it did because of this. One of the worst managerial decisions in Red Sox history. He's staying with them. Grady's decision to leave Pedro Martinez in the eighth inning when he had clearly lost his best stuff cost the Red Sox a 5-2 lead and in essence cost them the series. Now the question is, will Grady be back? Management refuses to endorse or even comment on his eighth inning decision or his future. I think it's uh, uh, outrageous uh, for me to uh, um, get into the business of uh, predicting uh, what's going to happen or second guessing what happened yesterday. For the players that cleaned out their lockers at Fenway Friday, there was no question they understand why Grady's being criticized, but back their manager 100%. If Pedro would have shut him down, Pedro just would have been the guy he always has been, and it would have been a great game. But uh, since he didn't get it done, obviously, that's going to be the question. So um, that was a crazy inning, but uh, I, I don't I don't second guess that decision at all. He won for, his, for the best, you know. Everybody knows that Petey out there, he's the best. The second guessing of manager Grady Little only adds to the disappointment the players feel the day after. This is a team that truly believed this was their year and that they would be remembered as the team that finally brought back a world championship to Boston. We were going to win the World Series this year. There was no doubt in my mind, and we were five outs away um, from doing that. Um, the team that won this series was going to win the World Series, and uh, um, I just really believe that, and uh, we came out on the short end of it. So that's what hurts the most is the fact that I know we have a World Series team in this clubhouse. Kind of sad, you know, it's a sad moment. We got to go home now, and and uh, get some rest and get prepared for next year. But next year has come too soon. Today we're supposed to be talking about game one of the World Series in Boston Saturday night, and we would be if not for Grady's gaff. And that is as bitter a pill as there is to swallow for Red Sox Nation. From Fenway Park, Mike Giardi, NECN Sports. Thank you, Mike. Of course, lots of questions now to be answered in baseball's offseason for the Red Sox, but if I can shine a little sunshine on a bl uh, cold and gloomy day in Red Sox Nation. Hey, pitchers and catchers report in only about four months to Fort Myers, Florida. So that will do it from Fenway Park. At Fenway Park, Mike Perlo, NECN. Thanks, Mike. Well, a true heart. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, it's our second anniversary, our cotton anniversary. So what did you get me? I'm Tony Kornheiser, and I got you a thong. Where is it? I'm where? That's nasty, dude. That's very nasty. It's not funny, okay? It's just nasty. It is funny. Yeah, it's nasty. nasty. It's also funny. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Will Bond and I yap about a whole new chapter in the tortured history of the Boston Red Sox, and Grant Hill joins us to talk about his prospects of playing ever again. We start with baseball. Wilbon, you might think that Boston fans would be screaming Aaron Bleep and Boone for sending their Red Sox out of the American League Championship Series with an 11th inning home run last night. But instead, they've turned on one of their own, manager Grady Bleep and Little, Ooh. who left a gassed Pedro Martinez in the game in the eighth inning rather than call on his suddenly dependable bullpen. Wilbon, did Grady Little blow the game for the Red Sox? I'm afraid so, Tony. I was watching this game last night, and I am screaming after the seventh inning about having somebody warmed up and ready to go. And right. then, when they start to hit him in the eighth, seven innings is all Pedro owes you with that kind of tension and that kind of pressure. I'm screaming, get him out. Your bullpen's given up one run in the last 15 and two-thirds innings of postseason play. Get him 
out. I thought Dusty Baker made a mistake when he left Mark Pryor in in game six in the Cubs series. Okay. I think Grady Little made a worse mistake. Here's what I think because you Dusty do. Because Dusty didn't have a bullpen. Here's, Grady what, here's does. what I think you do. Well, Pedro's been pitching on four days rest. He's been going over 100 pitches. He's a smaller guy than Pryor by a lot. You go out there. You literally put your arms around Pedro and you walk him. You don't stay there while the new pitcher comes in. You walk him to the dugout so even the Yankee fans will clap. Because right now, the Boston Red Sox would still be drinking champagne if he had made that move. See, these are the Yankees, and they can come back. He, just like Pryor, when he's getting a hit like that hard in the eighth, he's just run out of gas. He's got you to where you want to be. Giambi hit him hard in the seventh, lead. right? Hit him hard yes, in the seventh. Jeter hit him hard in the eighth. Bernie hit him hard in the eighth. You got to go get him. to take him Got to get him. While Grady Little is on a very, very hot seat tonight, Joe Torre avoided getting burned, even though he made some potentially risky moves that paid off big for the Yankees. Torre dropped a struggling Jason Giambi to seventh in the batting order. Cha-ching! Two home runs. Right. He brought in Mike Mussina from the pen for the first time in Mussina's career. Cha-ching! Three scoreless innings. And Torre leaned on Mariano Rivera for three innings, not one, three, to close it out. Cha-ching again. Series MVP. Maybe your boy, the boss, Tony, will say something nice now about his skipper. How about that? Two other moves I want to talk about. He went and decisively got Roger Clemens before the game was completely out of hand. He kept in contact with the Red Sox. He also started Enrique Wilson. This was risky at third base, who immediately, because he's a better hitter against Pedro, who immediately made a terrible throw that led in a run, I believe, in the second inning. That left him with Boone on the bench. That's right. He was able to go to Boone against Wakefield and win the game. The man in this whole thing was Mike Messina, who came on for the Yankees like Josh Beckett came on in critical situation for Florida. A in the inning, he comes in, to coming he in, comes in, in with I'll give you that. nobody out and two on, strikes out a guy, gets a double play ball to Agreed. Derringer. Big time move. So now, is your boy going to be a man? He, is he going to be a man and say something nice about his manager? Let me tell you something. Great. He, he has already said nice things about Tory. But the, the, constant, kind of the constant tension there, at some point, Joe Torre is going to turn around and say, it's been nice. I'm out of oh, here. Oh, now you're where I was at the beginning of this season I just when don't I know told what it's you he be. would walk. I d well, I don't know when it's going to be, but Tory has been with these guys a long time. They trust him. More importantly, he trusts them. And he's them. earned the right not to be second. And so now we Stein move on Brennan. to the World Series no sentimentalist wanted to see. The perennial champion Yankees against the complete party-pooping Marlins who knocked the Cubs out of what should have been their first World Series in 58 years. It's the team with the best record in baseball against the team with some of the lowest fan support in baseball. It almost seems unfair, but I don't think it is, which is why I make the Marlins the favorite right now. And, Will Bond, if you had any sense, you'd agree with me. Now, Tony, I'm a Cub fan. I am blinded by the magic of the New York Yankees, by the uniforms, by Yankee Stadium, by everything the Yankees are in October. They are royalty in sports in America. They're all that. I'm blinded by And let me tell you something. They're all Unlike that. you, okay, I thought the Marlins were a good team going into right. the playoffs. I knew they were. I thought they were a better team than the Cubs. They are a fine team the Yankees, with no holes. The Yankees are everything you think they are. But right now, they got nobody who can throw the ball. Messina came in on no rest and threw three innings in relief. Mariano Rivera can't go in game one at all. I don't know if he can go in game two. Wells is out of rotation right now. Clemens and Pettit just pitched yesterday and the day before yesterday. How many innings did Wells pitch? It, 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 Wells is back in the rotation. He came Suck in, it he up. Came it's in. October. I think the Yankees will be fortunate, and I think it is necessary for them to just win one in New one York game. and get back to New get York the day down 3-2. What, what's wrong with Marlins that? Marlins are good. What, they couldn't do that? Been that Marlins before? are good. Pudge Rodriguez, Jeff they, Conan playing great. You're preaching to Josh the choir Becker. after telling me the Cubs had They're to They're good. Win. They're Marlins good. Are Marlins are good. good. This is just in. It's only a consolation game would attract more interest, perhaps, in the World Series, at least this year. The Cubs and Red Sox pushed television ratings to historic highs before they both bowed out after being five outs from the World Series. The Red Sox took some big swings at the evil empire before ultimately being crushed by their arch rival. The Cubs, meanwhile, crashed in a way that was unspeakably Cub-like. Fans of both those teams are quite literally in mourning. So who's got it worse this week, Tone? Red Sox fans or Cub fans? Well, I'm sitting across from a Cub fan, and I believe Cub fans have it worse because it is now possible that they think, as I know you think, I will never in my lifetime see the Cubs get to a World Series. That's this right. was the best chance they had up 3-1, yep. yep. even up 3-2 coming home with their two best pitchers. The Red Sox lost to a team that had beaten them, not decisively, finished ahead of them in the same division. The Red Sox yeah. had to win two at Yankee Stadium. The Cubs had it on their racket. And only had to win one. I, I think, though, there's something 
a bad, I'm not gonna disagree with the words you said. I think there's something about losing to your arch rival that makes you just, it's unspeakably Then why did horrible. you tell me that attendance at work in Chicago yesterday it's after game it's seven nothing. was 20%. There's nobody there, because we're in mourning. You That's think what I'm all I'm saying, I'm just I don't wondering think, about losing to I don't think Red Sox rival. fans are in mourning, because Red Sox fans knew what they were going up against. When, and we didn't, Cubs, Cubs fans didn't know that? Cubs fans had to think when it was the Marlins. They had to think, did I think that? we can win did I this. I think that? Until we game, can. Until game can. six, you thought that. Until game yeah, six, until you Until about the eighth inning, when you called my house and you jinxed my team by saying ah, it was over. We're taking a break when we come.